Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating counters using the counters widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the widgets landing page, and here we can see some examples of counters made with it. Starting from the most straightforward version of this widget that has pared down stylization, and moving on to more elaborate examples. There's a wide range of customization options for you to take advantage of. Anything from different stylizations for the number to various typography options. You can also combine this widget with whatever background you like and easily create your dream design. The counters you create with it can have different background colors and you can decide whether they will cover just the number or the entire widget. Alternatively, you can create counters that include separators if that works with your overall page look. So let's see how we can create our own counters using the counters widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. Head over to the back end and in the Elementor sidebar, search for the counters widget. There it is. Now just drag it over to the right. Now we can see it has some dummy content by default. To customize it, we need to look at the options on the left, starting with these two, the start digit and the end digit. As the name suggests, the start digit is the number that starts the count. It doesn't have to be zero, I'll set 45. And the end digit is the number where our count stops, I'll set 52. Now, if you don't want the count to go through all the numbers between the digits you've set, then you can use this field to note down the steps between the start digit and the end digit. So, if I set 3, the counter will count the numbers, increasing each by 3. It will go 45, 48, 51, and then it would finish at 52. Then, step delay lets us slow down the count as it's shown. The value is in milliseconds, so if I set 500 here, that's how much each number will take to appear. OK. Then the digit label field will let us add text next to the number, if that's something you want to do. It looks like this, but I don't think I need it now. Alternatively, for a similar effect, we can enable an icon. By default, you'll get this icon, but if you want to change it, you can do so by going to the icon settings and uploading a new image. You can pick between something from the icon library or an SVG you want to upload. I'll take you through the options here by picking something from the library. For example, an asterisk. There. Insert. Then, once you have your icon, you can select its color. I'll just set an almost black shade so it matches the text. Alright. After that, we can adjust the icon size. The value can be in pixels, percentages or M's. I'll set 15 pixels for mine. That's all there is to it. It's very simple. Now that we cover that, I'll switch this to no, as I don't plan to use an icon for this counter. The option after this lets us enable a separator. If we switch this to yes, we get the default separator, which is this line. You can customize it, just go to the separator section. Here you have the layout option. Other than the standard, which is our default, we also have border image and with icon layouts. I'll go through them in a moment. But first, if you want to change something in terms of the separator style, go to the Style tab and open the Separator Style section. Here you can easily change the separator color to anything you like. Then you can pick the border, meaning separator style. We have solid, which is also our default, but we can make it dashed or dotted. OK. And we can adjust its width, too. So if you want to shorten it, you can put, say, 100 pixels, and it would look like this. Then we can adjust its thickness. Zero would make it disappear, but increasing the number would make it thicker. The margin top helps us create additional space between the separator and the number, like so. And the margin bottom helps us do the same for the space between the separator and the title text. OK. Getting back to the content tab now, I want to show you how the different layouts would look. If we switch this to border image, it'll look the same until we upload an image. And we can do that right underneath, in the separator border image section. Click to choose your image. This can be mine. Insert. And this is how it looks like. Now, my image is stretched, but it doesn't have to be that way. Let's see what options we have. 
The border image size lets us display the image as auto, cover, or contain. Then we can pick the border image position. That can be left, center, or right. And we can set our image to repeat if we want to. Other than round, which is our default, you can pick repeat, space, or none. Keep in mind this will look different for you as your image will almost certainly be different. Now let's see the other separator layout option. And that's this, with icon. This gives us a separator with an icon in the middle of it. Under position you can pick how the separator will be positioned. Whether it will be in the center, on the left, which is the default, or on the right. I'll put it back. Once you're settled with the positioning, you can go to select your icon if you haven't done so already. I'm going to use the same asterisk icon to show you how it would look. And if this is the separator style you decide to use, then you can go to the Style tab and open the Separator Icon Style options to customize it. The first option is for the separator icon color. Keep in mind the separator itself would be stylized using the set of options just above this one. This is just for the icon. So if we go to adjust the size, it will affect only the icon, as would the icon margin settings. Alright, now that we covered that, I can disable the separator. I don't plan to use it. And our next option is for changing the title text. I'll replace this, just a sec. Okay, then the field underneath this one lets us change the description text. I don't plan to keep this dummy text, even for the demo, so I'll just speed through and replace it. Hang on. There it is. If we look at the sections below, you'll notice we already covered them as I was explaining some of the general options. The sole exception is the developer tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. So we get this text. And we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, that's it. Let's move on to the Style tab and see the rest of the options there. For starters, we have alignment. So we can make the widget stay on the left, in the center, or on the right. The Digit Typography option offers all kinds of typography settings. You can change the font family, scroll through this list, or search for the font if you know its name. Then we can change its size, like this. With the weight option, we can turn our title bold or use one of the number values to fine tune its weight. I'll use 500. Then we have the text transform option, which would usually make our text uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal. But since we're working on the number, none of these have a visible effect. I'll go through them again when we reach a bit of text. After this, we have the style, which can make our number normal, which is the same as default or turn it italic, or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or we can use none of these, which is the same as our default. Then, with the line height, we can adjust the height of the line with our number. It's in M's by default, but you can switch it to pixels. I don't think I need this now, so I'll just remove it. Finally, the letter spacing option gives us more space between the digits of the number. And that's it for the typography options. The next thing we have is the digit color. You replace it as you would any other color. And the digit background color. When we set the color here, we get a background just behind the number. And this is something you can get creative with. Let me show you an example from the landing page. Just a sec. There it is. You can do something like this when you set a background color and adjust its size and radius. So if you like this look, these are the options you'd need to use. Size with a default value in pixels. You can use this slider to adjust it, or you can type in a number value. I'll set 125 pixels. And if you want to turn this square into a circle, then you can adjust the background radius. By increasing the values, you can round out the corners of the background color, or increase them enough to turn its shape into a circle. I'll set 125 pixels to do that. Now it looks like I have a spotlight on my counter. Alright. Since we covered that, I'll put this back the way it was. Moving on, we have the digit stroke effect. 
If we set this to yes, our number changes its look and becomes outlined. We can change the color of the outline here, just pick a new one. And the outline width here. Ok, let me turn it off. After this, we have the title tag option. It applies to the title text here and it lets us pick any tag between h1 and h6 or even the p tag. Then we can change the title color if we need to. Below this is the title typography option. The options here are identical to the ones we saw in digit typography. I only want to show you the text transform option as I promised earlier. We can use it to turn our title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal. And that's it, we can carry on. The next option is text color, and it lets us set the color of this text below the title. You can change it to whatever you like. The second option we have for stylizing the text is the typography. Again, the typography options are all the same. These only apply to the text instead of the title or the digit. Now, if we look at the sections underneath, spacing style is the only one we've left to cover, as we've already gone over the options in separator style and separator icon style. So let's open it up. This is where we can set a margin for the title top. If I set 10 pixels, the space here will be a touch smaller, and we can also set a margin for the text top. We do that here. All right. Finally, the text padding lets us adjust the space all around the description text. If you keep all the values linked together, you can increase the padding evenly. Or you can delink the values and adjust only specific parts of the padding, like the top. And that's it. If you need multiple counters in the same section and you're happy with the one you made, you can simply duplicate it. To do that, right click on it and go to duplicate. I'll make a few more now so you can see how they would look together, but I'll skip ahead with the video because we've already covered the process. And here we are now. My counters are all done. Of course, you can use fewer or add more of them, that's up to you. And don't forget you can stylize these to have different looks within the group if you don't want to make them look alike, as I did. If we look back on the landing page, we can see the different things we can do with the counters widget and the potential variations we can make. Now that you know which options you have and how to use them, it's up to you to decide what you want to create with this widget and how it can work with the style and design of your site. The options we covered can help you make counters like these, or you can opt to make something with a completely different style and look. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making counters can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its counters widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!